Also here, a new testimony from the Bank of Canada has just revealed that they're planning on creating their very own type of crypto called a CBDC or a central bank digital currency. Now, some politicians are rather upset about this saying that, and I quote, if the government controls your bank account, it can surveil what you're doing, what you're spending, and potentially even abuse your civil liberties. So in today's video, we'll go over the brand new statements from the Bank of Canada, what they mean, and what it means for you, as well as whether or not this is even crypto or if it's something different in entirely, as well as some of the pros and some of the major drawbacks for when something like this will be implemented. This new information came from testimony that the Bank of Canada gave when they were called in front of the Federal Finance Committee. Now, the conversation started talking about inflation and new monetary policy, but it quickly turned about halfway through into a lot more conversation about crypto. Now, let me show you what the Bank of Canada has planned here in this video clip, and then we'll break it all down. Do you expect cryptocurrencies, either in the near or medium term, Term to ever replace the Canadian dollar as our legal tender in Canada? As I said earlier, the government has initiated a, a study to look at digital currencies in general and to look at how their increasing popularity is affecting the economy, affecting financial stability. You know, one of the things that we've been studying for a number of years is whether or not we need a, a national digital currency, a central bank digital currency, um, and they may hold potential to, to, to bring more efficiency to payments, more competition um, to the financial sector. And so they're, they're, it's really uh, worth studying, it's worth looking at, and the central banks uh, have been doing that for, for quite a long time now. And we have actually moved from a research stage into um, sort of development, early development stage. Um, the key thing to note here from Carolyn Rogers, the deputy governor of the Bank of Canada, is that they've moved from a research phase to a development phase of their own CBDC. Now we know that the Bank of Canada has been researching central bank digital currencies for quite some time, but this is the first information that we've got saying, hey, we're actively developing one for use in Canada. And it seems that the governor of the Bank of Canada, Tiff Macklem, could be quite scared of more crypto dominance in the future, as he explains that his top priority is to keep the Canadian dollar as the main instrument and thus keeping the power inside of the Bank of Canada's hands. Let me show you this clip and then I'll explain exactly what I mean. What's important is that the Canadian dollar remain at the center of our financial system. Now, as far as I can see, in the future, the Canadian dollar will remain at the center of our financial. So we need a monetary policy in Canada for Canadians, which reflect, which reflects rather the needs of Canadians. Now, this doesn't mean that there couldn't be uh, changes. At the uh, bank, we may deal with a digital currency. In a digital economy, there are reasons why this might be uh, good for Canadians to have the opportunity to have cryptocurrency or, or digital funds in the central bank. Now there are two main points here. The second one really raises some red flags for me, but we'll start with the first. Uh, the Bank of Canada here is saying that we want to keep the Canadian dollar as strong as possible. Now, of course, if you're the Bank of Canada, this is exactly what you want because the Bank of Canada is the sole controller of the Canadian dollar. And when new Canadian dollars get minted, it's as a result of the uh, a decision made by the Bank of Canada. So if we sort of shift into a different financial system, well, then the Bank of Canada has far less control to print money and raise and lower interest rates as they see fit. And the second point that he makes here right at the end is that it may be beneficial for Canadians to store their digital dollars inside of a Bank of Canada central bank bank account. Now this raises major red flags for me, but before we get into that, I want to take a second to talk about today's sponsor, which is Coinly. If you're watching this video, it's likely that you may already own some cryptocurrency and it's also likely that you're in Canada. And this Monday, May 2nd is the last absolute day that you can file your taxes with the CRA. And whenever you sell or earn income in cryptocurrency, well, you're going to have to pay some taxes on that. So it's important you don't forget your tax liability. Coinly is a software that makes it super easy to track all of your crypto transactions and to calculate how much you're actually going to owe on your taxes this year. You can connect Coinly to any of the crypto exchanges that you might use, as well as any of your crypto wallet addresses, and it will bring in all of that transaction data and automatically generate the information that you need. There's a simple dashboard where you can track your overall portfolio, and it can actually output the forms that you need to send to the CRA in order to get your taxes in order. It's free to sign up and test Coinly, so it's definitely worth it to take a look, especially if you have yet to do your crypto taxes, which again, are due on this Monday, May 2nd. 
So I recommend using Coinly as a tool to get your crypto taxes in order and save yourself the headache of scrolling through all of your transactions and doing it manually. Now, we were talking about these red flags. Well, right now in Canada, the dollar is already essentially digital with big banks allowing us to send and transact largely online, right? Like when you send an e-transfer to another person, there's no actual physical paper money transferring back and forth. It's just ones and zeros on a computer. If the Canadian CBDC is run on a private blockchain where the node operators and validators are actually government entities or the central bank itself, the Bank of Canada, well, there's not really much of a difference from just using these big banks databases that we're already using today. But there is one main difference. If the government and the Bank of Canada are the ones running this database or this blockchain, well, then they now have the ability to control the rules of the blockchain unilaterally. Instead of using decentralized crypto, like Bitcoin or Ethereum, where the rules of the network are determined by the users of the network slowly over time and where there's set rules and procedures. Well, if we have a cryptocurrency and a blockchain that's run by the government of Canada and the Bank of Canada, they could essentially change the rules of the game overnight with no warning. Instead of having multiple competing banks where citizens can either choose to store their money or not, we could instead have one central bank where citizens are forced to store their CBDC, uh, Canada's central bank digital currency. Now, the current front runner for the leadership of the Conservative Party, also running to be Prime Minister of Canada, Pierre Polyevre, has this concern on his mind. Let me show you a recent clip, his response to this new information from the Bank of Canada about their active development of a CBDC. But it would bring plenty of new risks. This policy could lead to a bank run, causing financial panic. And that could happen if people were incentivized by state-subsidized interest uh, uh, payments or uh, other uh, artificial advantages. Furthermore, the government controls your bank account. It can surveil what you're doing, what you're spending, and potentially abuse your civil liberties. Additionally, in a system like this, the government could implement policy or new legislation that looks good on the service, but has some major side effects and consequences. We've all heard of politicians wanting to stimulate the economy, right? Get people to spend more money so that businesses can do better, so we can get more jobs. Um, and this is something that we hear politicians talk about all the time, right? Well, if we have a central bank digital currency, depending on how it's designed, they could have the ability to uh, artificially impact interest rates rates to incentivize you to spend your money. Now, in an extreme case, this could look like them implementing a negative interest rate where they say, hey, maybe you have this amount of money and you're not spending it. We deem you as hoarding your wealth uh, and we want to sort of implement uh, even a negative interest rate on you so that if you're not spending your money and you're saving too much of it, that's not good for the economy. So we're going to slowly drain money out of your account um, as a sort of negative interest rate to encourage you to go spend that money now before you lose it. Now, Polly ever sees a similar problem, albeit on the other side of having uh, artificially high interest rates. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The central bank would have an unfair competitive position because it can cr artificially create cash out of thin air, something that uh, commercial banks could not match. It could fo effectively force Canadians to move their money over in order to get state subsidized interest payments all of which would lead to far more inflation. We've seen what happens when government has too much control of our money. Runaway inflation. We're paying for it today. So he's concerned that the central bank could get you into this system by saying, hey, we're going to offer a 10% interest rate on your money. So deposit all your money with us because you can get better rates than you can get with these lousy big banks that we don't have total control over. Um, but ultimately, this decision on whether or not we're going to go forward with creating a central bank digital currency, well, who does that lie with? Well, Carolyn Rogers explains it here. Ultimately, whether or not uh, Canada uh, will have a central bank digital currency is a decision that the Parliament will make. It's not one that the Bank of Canada will make. But we view our job as, as to be ready to, to have done the work ahead of time so that if we decide that a central bank digital, digital currency is something that would benefit Canadians, that we're ready to provide it. So it sounds like it's the government and the House of Commons that will actually make the final call about whether or not we fully implement this CBDC. But the Bank of Canada, all the while behind the scenes, will be developing it so that when they decide, hey, this is something that we need, uh, the Bank of Canada can have it ready to implement. Now, this means that it's extra important to understand what each individual political party currently thinks about crypto and how educated they are about the space and the potential risks and benefits of uh, sort of uh, 
uh, these different uh, aspects of crypto, be it a CBDC or other decentralized crypto. Uh, and you can find out exactly what each individual party's current position is uh, with the video. I'll link it right here so you can take a look at it. I made it last week, but it goes over every individual party as well as the new crypto law, the first crypto law that is hopefully going to be passed uh, by uh, Michelle Rempel Gardner. Uh, we go into far more detail in that video. I personally believe that the main benefit of crypto is the ability for us to rebuild a financial system that is decentralized. Right now, politicians and central bankers are the ones that can pull the strings and manipulate our monetary system. This is especially concerning when we have central bankers that we don't vote for and elect. They are appointed individuals that don't have to directly answer to the Canadian public. With truly decentralized networks like Bitcoin and Ethereum, we have a credibly neutral financial system where no individual party, corporation, government, or institution is able to make the rules. Now it's not guaranteed, but if we don't allow these centralized institutions to grab control of the digital asset space, well, we do truly have an opportunity to rebuild the financial system where everybody plays by the same rules, everybody has the same information, and everyone is able to make their own decisions inside of that system, again, with all the same information. That's what I'm hoping for. But we've covered a lot today, and I'm curious what you think about it. Do you think that we should actually go forward with creating a CBDC? I mean, if it was implemented in the right way, well, it could certainly be beneficial for Canadians and for the Canadian economy, but the ability for it to be implemented in the wrong way, well, is it worth the risk? Let me know down there in the comments, and if you haven't already done so, check out the link in the description. Uh, a huge thanks to Coinly, the sponsor of today's video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. But with all of that said, uh, thanks so much for watching, everybody. I really hope this video has helped you out at least a little bit, and I'll see you next time.